But this is it, we're off to Australia. It seems strange to be sailing there. It's the kind of place that's spoken about a lot in the UK. There's that place a long way away down under and we're just gonna sail in there, which seems really surreal. We've got a really good weather window to get there. It's just over 800 miles. And with this weather, we should get there in about six days. excited about getting to Australia but I'm also really sad. New Caledonia was our last island in the South Pacific which has been just an incredible place. Um, I don't know when we're going to be able to get back here. It's still an exciting life to go. Maybe we'll come back one day. Maybe you'll grab the wheel and we'll turn left through the Panama Canal when we get to the Caribbean. I don't cry easily, but I guess it shows how much this time in the South Pacific has really meant to me. the first couple of days worth of food before I set off on passage just so I can reheat it which is much easier and just reduces time in the galley. I find the first couple of days are when I tend to feel most seasick and tired so it's really good to just spend as little time in here as possible. Ginger cake and custard. I do get well looked after don't I? Ginger's supposed to stop us being seasick but I think it's just a good excuse to eat cake. Egg and custard. Got to have a gimbaled hand so, so it doesn't spill. Life at sea can be pretty monotonous. In this sea state, about the only thing that's comfortable to do when you're on watch is to wedge yourself in the cockpit and read a book. It was fairly windy when we set off and there was a four metre swell coming from our side which made it very rolly. Thankfully, the wind is now easing off as forecast and the swell has changed direction to come from behind us, gently helping us on our way to Australia. As the swell died down, life on board became more enjoyable and we settled into the routine of passage. A couple of nights ago we were putting the third reef in the mainsail and we got a tiny tear. So that we don't cause any more damage, we're going to keep the third reef in all the way to Australia which was absolutely fine when it was windy, but now there's hardly anything, so we're gonna have to try something different. We've got the Genoa pulled out on one side, 
and the spinnaker out on the other. We don't normally fly these sails both together, but it seems to be working really well. So maybe we'll do it more in future. Having both these sails up at the same time makes up for the sail area that we've lost by not being able to put the full mainsail up. We could fix the mainsail out here. It's calm enough, but we'll be able to do a much better job if we do it when we're at anchor in Australia. And since we're going to be there in two or three days time, it's not really a problem. This booby spent most of the day trying to land on various bits of Florence and becoming increasingly frustrated at the constantly moving target. Taking several attempts to land. He's so cool. Do you think biosecurity will let us keep him? <laughs> He's kind of Australian. Well, I'm not sure we're going to keep him unless there's no pooing. Yeah, no pooping. It had taken so much effort for it to land and then stay on board that we didn't have the heart to move it, despite the mess it made. And it kept us company through the night watches until the early hours of the morning. We're not allowed any fresh fruit or vegetables into Australia, so I've been cooking up a curry. How many apples have you eaten today? Ah. Uh, Could you eat another one? Okay, no problem. It's not often I get asked to eat apples, normally they're saved as fresh produce. When you finish that, you've got some popcorn, some cucumber, and some carrots to eat. As we approached the coast of Australia, the sea suddenly became very rough. It's a bit boisterous, isn't it? Yeah, the depth here goes up from about 500 metres to just 30 metres in a really short space of time. And it really throws up some seas, but it's not too bad, we just slowed down for it. The closer we got to the coast, the windier it became, until we had 30 knots whistling about our ears. You can see land, so we're arriving in Australia, and living in the UK, whenever you talk about somewhere really far away, you talk about Australia. So to have actually sailed here feels pretty amazing. If we're lucky, we might just be able to get the anchor down before the sunset. We wouldn't normally come into a place like this this late in the day, would we? Because we'd normally be looking at reefs, but not a problem here. It shouldn't be a problem even if we do get here just after sunset, because it's well charted and uh, there are lit boys marking the channels. It would be too bad. It'd be nice to get out of this wind, wouldn't it? It would be very nice to stop and get out of this. We 
Marine Rescue Bundaberg, Marine Rescue Bundaberg. This is Sailing Yacht Florence, Sailing Yacht Florence, over. Florence, Florence, welcome to Australia. Will you come into the river and go up the river and just before you get to the um, Bundaberg Bridge, you'll see a sign that says Next time, we set off down the coast of Australia, come face to face with a wild dingo, and have to solve some engine issues. Thank you for your support, we really appreciate it. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Your comments really motivate us to keep making these videos. Thank you.